One of Microsoft Project's more sophisticated features is its ability to tie together several project files. This allows related projects to be synchronized so as to start or finish on specific dates relative to each other and allow project managers to coordinate on such things. Project even allows tasks from different projects to be linked once we create what we call sub-projects within a master project. First, we make sure the sub-projects themselves, the ones that need to be part of the larger effort, are ready to go. As we see here, we have to start with the pieces ready to put in place. Then, to create the master project, the container which holds the sub-projects, we open a blank new project, as I've done here. I've already saved it under a simple title. You can call it just master. Whatever it holds will be based on the content of the sub-projects it contains. The next step, of course, is to insert the sub-projects. There's no particular rule for the order they have to be in, but it's a good idea to give it some thought in case the start dates or finish dates or priority for whatever reason might matter. We can go to the Project tab up here in the ribbon, slide over to the Sub-Project button in the Insert group, give it a click, and then just make sure we're in the correct folder, uh, find the two files in this case, Sub-Commercial and Sub-Residential Construction. We can even insert them at the same time. Just select the two of them and then click Insert at the bottom. Once we do this, we should probably save, just to be extra careful, Control S or File to Save or whatever is good. The next thing, once we've done that, once we've got the sub-projects in place, um, well, we can make whatever changes are necessary. Oh, and by the way, the uh, last report that I read indicates that the largest number of sub-projects we can insert in a master is 998. So it's unlikely we'll run out of room on that anytime soon. Just want to make sure we don't have too many sub-levels, sub-tasks, so as not to confuse ourselves. But once we do have the sub-projects in place, because all the files in question are Microsoft Project files, making a change in the master carries over to the original sub-project file, which is still technically separate, and vice versa. For example, if we want the two projects to finish rather than start on the same day, we can see here the uh, difference between them, uh, we can make the change. Now, we could open the residential construction file if we wished, make the change there, save and go back, but if we right-click the file here in the master and go to information, we can see that there is a project information button. The kicker is that we actually have to expand the sub-project in question. And then if we right-click in that row and go to Information, we can see that the Project Information button becomes available. We can make the change at this end as well as at the other end. I click on the button and we can see here that what we will now need to do is change the setup to schedule not forward from the start date but backward from the finish date. I can now change the date here in question in this case to November 1st, 2022, and click OK, and then OK out of the inserted box here. And then if I tuck the residential file back up, we can see that the dates match. Of course, once again, don't forget to save. And while we're doing this, when we're talking about saving with multiple files, um, the program will often bring up a series of these uh, Want to Save Your Changes dialog boxes, and we can just go ahead and click Yes to All. Save ourselves a bit of work, a bit of time. But now, on a somewhat lower level, if we want to make a change to uh, something more specific within one of the projects, the sub-projects, we can open it up. And let's say I wanted to change the uh, number of days on a given task here, uh, receiving notice. Let's say I wanted to spin it up from two days to three. Well, I can do that. Click the spinner arrow, hit enter. We see the blue highlight telling us that the entire timeline for this sub-project has changed, uh, or at least a good chunk of it has. I'll go ahead and save again. Just file to save as usual. And once again, we get this dialog box asking, do you want to save just the one or shall we say yes to all? I'll again go ahead and do that. We can even go further 
we can actually link tasks between the sub-projects. If I expand them both out, so I can see all of both, I could now slide down to the end of the first sub-project here. I just have to make sure I click the correct task. We can even do a right-click and scroll to task if we wish. Uh, but having selected it, I can then scroll down to the last task of the other sub-project and control click on that one so that the two are now selected. It's important to select the right ones and usually we want to do it from top to bottom in chronological order so they get the hint as it were. I can then go to the task tab and slide over here to the schedule group click the button for linking the two tasks and if we now look carefully on the right hand side of the Gantt we can see that there's the arrow dropping down to this last subtask and go to the first subproject and here we are the arrow dropping off from the end of that task one last point to think about it's considered good practice to keep all the related files in one folder this makes the file paths simpler and emailing or compressing the files in question a good deal less trouble